today's Lightroom video is actually not necessarily about Lightroom specifically. What we're going to do is talk a little bit about a plugin that you can use that's now free. Um, and in particular, one of the things that I like to use is when I want to pull out just a little bit of detail uh, from somewhere in the photograph. And this could be trying to pull out a little bit of detail maybe in your shadows um, or the darker areas of a photograph. But in particular, I especially love using this plugin when we're trying to extract some detail out of uh, water, movement, uh, moving water, things like that. And so um, this plugin's been around for quite some time. It's a plugin by Nick Filters. And I want to show it to you because quite often I see people using this to uh, a, a too much uh, in their images, to a, to a greater degree, and it actually takes away from the quality of the photograph. So while it's awesome and free, um, it can also be extremely dangerous to use. So I'm going to show you um, what I use, how I use it, um, and uh, we're going to pull a little bit out from the water stream in this image. So let me show you exactly uh, what it is I'm talking about. First, if you don't have this plugin, what you want to do is navigate to the Nick Collections and download all of the plugins. You're going to get probably about seven or eight of these plugins absolutely free which is insane because these used to be about three hundred dollars until they dropped it down to hundred and fifty dollars and now they're free um, once you have this installed what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to whatever photo or photograph it is you want to edit and then you're gonna navigate up to the uh, photos menu and you're gonna go to edit in and when you do this, you're going to see all of the plugins that have now been installed that you have access to. And where you're going to find this detail um, tool is underneath the color effects panel. So we're going to choose that. Now while this loads up, it's important that I mention to you that <clears throat> this is not Lightroom anymore. Once this opens, you're in a completely different external editor. So uh, you'll probably get this little dialog box that's going to ask you if you want to open up uh, an original or a copy, just open up the copy. I've already made Lightroom adjustments to this photograph, so I'm going to edit the copy with Lightroom adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and hit edit. And what it's going to do now is we are leaving Lightroom and we are entering this external uh, plugin area. When we're done inside of Nick Filters, we will actually return back to Lightroom and your photograph will too. You'll see that at the end of this video. Now, if you're using this plugin for the very first time, it's important to note that your photograph probably just turned black and white. But don't freak out. The reason that it's turned black and white is because you've never used this plugin before. And if you look over on the left hand side where you have all of the different filters here to your disposal, the very first one in alphabetical order is black and white conversion. And that is why it's turning your photo into a black and white photograph. But we're going to change that right now. So this is broken up into three sections. You have the left hand side, which is all of the presets or plugins that you get to choose from. Then you have the middle, which is just showing you a preview of what it looks like. And then you have the right hand side, which is how you modify the filter that you have chosen. So in particular, the one that I'm looking for is called the detail extractor. So if you just follow along down alphabetical order, you'll run right into it and you can choose detail extractor. Once you've chosen the filter that you, it is you want to apply to the photograph, you know, you could choose any one of these. You could just bounce around and see what they do. You know, cross color, uh, cross processing looks pretty cool, darken contrast, whatever it is. But once you've chosen the filter that you want, now you're looking at the right hand side because this is where we're going to modify everything. Now you do have a little toggle switch or an on and off switch. So as I turn this checkbox off, you can see what this did, or turn it on, you can see what it did. And in particular, what I'm looking at here is the water in the photograph. I don't want this necessarily applied to any other parts of the photograph, 
Maybe in your example you do, but in this photograph I just want it in the water. So I'm toggling this on and off, and as I do, I can see that this effect is global, which means it's affecting everything in the photograph. So what we need now is a way to modify where this is going to be applied. And so this is where our control points come into play. And I like this a lot because it goes in hand with some of the other tutorials we've been doing where we've modified, say, the gradual filter or the radio filter or the adjustment brush even. If you haven't seen any of those videos, we'll link a card up in the description here so that you can watch some of those videos. But basically what we're doing is we're customizing where this effect is going to be placed. Since this isn't Photoshop, I can't use a masking feature to mask in or mask out. So I've got to use these control points to put exactly the texture where I want it and where I don't want it. And that's just by addition and subtraction. In this particular instance, I want to add the effect, the detail extractor, I want to add it to certain places. So if you look over here, there's a plus button and a minus button. Add or subtract, just like math. So if I want to add this effect to the water, I'm going to choose the add control point and then I'm just going to come somewhere over in the water where I want to add this texture and just click or place this pin in that particular location. And now if I turn the detail extractor on and off, you can see how it's really only affecting that small section in the photograph. But if I want to add more texture to the other side or maybe a different area, I'm going to go grab another plus point and go to the part of the photograph where I want to add this and click one time. And now if I toggle this adjustment on and off, you can see that I have a water being detailed in the left hand side and the right hand side. I'm going to add a couple of more points just for some drama so you can see what this looks like. I might go down here and add some down in this little whitewash here. I think it's pretty cool. And I want to add some up in the darker area up in this corner section. Another thing that you could do to the photograph in addition to placing these pins is you can modify them by doing two things. You can either modify the radius or the area being affected. You can do that by pulling on one of these tabs. So if I pull on it, I can make the area smaller or larger. And another thing you can do is choose the opacity or strength of the adjustment. Again, this is the exact same thing you could do with the adjustment brush, radio filter, grad graduated filter. You could, you could reduce the opacity of this adjustment so that you can control how strong or not this is being applied. So again, as I go in here and toggle this on and off, I can see exactly what is happening to the water. I love what this is doing. Once you're done, you're just going to go ahead down here at the bottom and hit save. And what this is going to do now is save all of the changes that you've made to this particular image and bring a copy of this photograph back into Lightroom, which means that you will have two versions of this in your timeline, basically a before image and an after image. If I go down here into my timeline section, you'll actually see what I'm talking about. I have now a TIFF version of this file, which is the one that came from Nick Filters, and then I have the before image as well. So if I toggle on these uh, before and after, you can see how the water has been changed. So again, anything that you're looking for to pull detail out of, this works fantastic for water, but it also works great on skies, maybe on trees, sometimes even if you're a wedding photographer and you need to pull a little detail out of a bride's dress or uh, anything like that, maybe you just want more texture in someone's hair, all of that works awesome. But proceed with caution because this filter can be very, very degrading to the photograph and add a little bit more imperfections and degradation to these images that you really don't want. So use it lightly, use it sparingly, but do try it out on some of your images. I'm sure you'll love it just like I do. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I know I did. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, leave us a comment, and as always, thank you so much for your support. Until next time, my name is Adam. I'm out.